Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So far, I have completed five accounting standards. AS1, Disclosure of Accounting Policies. AS2, Valuation of Inventories. AS3, Cash Flow Statement. AS4, Contingencies and Events Occurring After the Balance Sheet Date. Now in this video, the fifth accounting standard, AS5. That is net profit or loss for the period, prior period items and change in the accounting policies. This is the title of this accounting standard AS5. So watch the video till the end because in examination you may get a question regarding explain the accounting standard 5. So be thorough. So watch all the videos in order to get a complete command on the subject accounting standards. If you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject accounting standard. The first unit four videos I have uploaded on introduction to accounting standard, objectives, benefits, advantages, and then what is the process of formulation of accounting standard, what is the list of accounting standard, convergence of accounting, Indian accounting standard with global standards. All these things I have already explained in the first unit. Second unit, all the accounting standard, first to fifth accounting standard I've explained. Now, before starting the explanation of this accounting standard, take the screenshot of the points which I've written on the board. Now, AS5. The title of this accounting standard is net profit or loss for the period, prior period items and change in the accounting policies. First of all, what is the objective? What is the purpose of this accounting standard? The objective of AS5 is to prescribe the classification and disclosure of certain items in the statement of profit and loss so that the, all the enterprises prepare the statement so that uh, all the prepare and present such a statement on a uniform basis. See, one of the uh, objective is to make the comparison of statement of profit or loss. The statement of profit or loss can be compared only with the presentation and disclosure or same in all the organizations and in the same organization from one year to another year. So if the classification and treatment is same followed by all the organization, we can easily compare it. So comparison is possible when the treatment, when the disclosure is same by all the organization. That is the purpose. So this accounting standard will show how to classify, how to disclose certain items which are taken in the statement of profit and loss. Now this enhances the comparability, but if you follow this accounting standard 5, it enhances the comparability of financial statements of a particular enterprise from one year to another year. That is called intra-firm comparison. Similarly, the statement of profit can be compared of one organization with another organization. That is called inter-firm comparison. So comparison will be facilitated. Now, AS5 requires the classification and disclosure of extraordinary and prior period items and the disclosure of certain items. Not only for the current year, <clears throat> but some extraordinary items or prior period items. So how to deal with these extraordinary and prior period items? The complete uh, presentation disclosure will be given by this accounting standard. Third one, it has also specified the accounting treatment for changes in accounting estimates and the disclosure of the changes in accounting policies. See here, while making the financial statements, a number of accounting estimates will be done. Similarly, a business may change accounting policies. So how to show the, uh, how to disclose the changes in accounting policy, how to, I mean, affect the changes in the accounting estimates. These are the things which are covered in this accounting standard. Now, first of all, 
net profit or net loss for the period for the period means current financial year so during the current accounting period how to find out the net profit or net loss here all items of incomes and expenses which are recognized in a period should be included in the determination of profit or loss accrual system will be followed in this accrual system all the income and expenses will be recognized for the period so for the current accounting period we recognize all the incomes and all the expenses to calculate the net profit or net loss for the period that is the first one secondly the net profit or loss for the period comprises the following components when we calculate the net profit or net loss by making statement of profit or loss we include five items what are the five items we include the first item is profit or loss from ordinary activities i'll explain you what do you mean by ordinary activities profit or loss from ordinary activities second law extraordinary items third point prior period items fourth point changes in accounting estimates and the last point changes in accounting policies so these are the five items which are shown in the profit and loss statement to calculate the current year's profit or loss now one by one all these five i'm going to explain and in examination you have to write whatever i'm explaining always keep a notebook pen calculator beside you while watching this video and whenever i say something important to note it down then profit or loss from, from the ordinary activities so we divide the activities of the business into two that is ordinary activities and extraordinary activities so what are ordinary activities the main activity of the business is called ordinary activity every business is concerned with a particular type of activities like for example a um, uh, cloth business their main activity is dealing in cloth a car business the main activity is dealing in cars so every business deals one or the other activity the main activity in which the business deals is called ordinary activity the ordinary activity are those which are undertaken by an enterprise as part of its business main part of the business that activity uh, which is for the main business that is called ordinary activity and such related activity in which the enterprise is engaged not only main activity but related activity will also be called as ordinary activity i'll give an example the so main activity and all its related activity will also come under ordinary activity example like hospital is there the hospital main uh, i mean activity is to provide health services to the patients but apart from that the hospital is also maintaining a pharmacy the hospital is selling the pharmacy so whatever the activity of pharmacy is a related activity of the hospital so hospital activity and pharmacy activity both are called ordinary activities so here uh, and in furtherance or incidental to the arising of those activity for example a car dealer sets up a sales and service workshop along with the car showroom simple example a car showroom is there apart from car car showroom they have started one spare one spare uh, i mean activity and service activity so the spare selling activity and service providing activity is a part of the main activity of car showroom so we can say the car showroom the spares the service all these are related activities and all these are ordinary activities and thus all activities such as sale of car sale of spare servicing of cars will be considered as ordinary activity so in examination first of all you have to write <coughs> about what are the items that will come under profit and loss five items in this first item is ordinary activity second item is extraordinary activity any activity which is other than the ordinary activity any activity other than the ordinary activity is called extraordinary activity so here these are the expenses or incomes that clearly arise from events or transaction that are clearly distinct distinct from the ordinary activities 
that means any transaction or events which are completely distinct from the ordinary activities different from the ordinary activities different from the ordinary activities example a car showroom has also set up one grocery shop has also set up one i mean uh, uh, restaurant business so these are completely diff different one distinct activity so and therefore are expected to recur frequently or regularly as5 requires that extraordinary items should be disclosed in the statement of profit or loss as a part of the prof net profit or loss for the period so while calculating the profit or loss by making statement of profit or loss separately it has to be shown regarding extraordinary items what are the incomes and expenses under extraordinary items should be separately disclosed that is a requirement of as5 the nature and amount of each extraordinary item should be separately disclosed not only disclosed but separately disclosed each and every activity extraordinary activity that's it so two items have explained first of all what do you mean by ordinary activity what do you mean by extraordinary activity now third one is prior period items prior means before that means before then current accounting year before the current accounting year that are called prior period items so these are the incomes or expenses that arise in the current accounting year as a result of errors or omissions in the preparation of financial statement of one or more earlier accounting periods so if any error or omission was committed in the earlier accounting periods and the consequence of that error or omission of that error which was conducted in the previous years during the current year the effect is happening that is called prior period item example one error one omission was conducted last four years back and during the current accounting period we come to know that last two years back we have committed some mistake the effect will be rectified now this is called prior period item so any income or expenses arising during the current year on account of error or omission which was occurred some previous years then this uh, i mean transaction income or expense in uh, occurring during the current year is called prior period items as5 requires that the nature and amount of prior period items should be separately disclosed in the statement of profit or loss so ultimately requirement of as5 is if any prior period item occurs during the current year it should be separately disclosed in the statement of profit and loss that's it so three items have completed ordinary extraordinary and prior period now changes in accounting estimates in a number of situations the accountant has to make some estimations everything will not be objective some items are there which are subjective that means the accountant has to apply his judgment estimate and those estimate will not be same always there may be change in the accounting estimate example a uh, provision for doubtful debts there is no fixed rule how much should be uh, how much should be the percentage of provision for doubtful debts every company will decide on its own terms but once a fixed uh, i mean percentage is given then it is not compulsory that the same percentage will be continued the business can change it this is called change in estimate example earlier years provision for doubtful debts were 5% 5% was the provision for doubtful debts made in the previous years now current year they have changed the provision for doubtful debts to 10% this is called change in accounting estimate then what is the requirement of as5 whenever there is a change in accounting estimate here Ch accounting estimates are the approximation by their very nature these estimates will need to be revised as additional information be becomes known so time to time the accounting estimates may change when the accounting estimates change the amount of income or expense will change when the amounts changes then definitely it will have an effect on the profit or loss 
For example, we can only estimate the useful life of an asset. Estimates are subjective. When we purchase an asset, we have to estimate what is the life of the asset. According to the estimation of the life of the asset, we can provide depreciation. So depreciation depends on estimation of the life of the asset. But once the life is decided, in future there is a possibility that the business may change the life of the asset. That is called change in estimate. That is completely subjective judgment. In other words, different persons may arrive at different estimates based on the information available. However, estimates do not undermine the reliability of financial statements. You should not think that by making estimates, the reliability of the financial statement will decrease. No, financial statements will be very much dependable, reliable, even after making the accounting estimate. Because accounting estimate is a part of the accounting. We cannot ignore the estimate. Compulsory it will be there. So it will not undermine the reliability of the financial statements. And a change in accounting estimate can affect the current period as well as future periods. Once an accounting estimate is changed, the repercussions will be not only during the current year, but also the effect you will find in future years also. Then AS5, as per AS5, the effect of change in accounting estimate should be included in determining the net profit or net loss for the period. Whatever is the effect in the change in accounting estimate that will affect the change in the profit or loss. Then for example change in the rate of provision for doubtful debts however if the change in estimate affects the period in which it occurs and the future period then the impact of such should be reflected in the future period also. <coughs> Once an accounting estimate is changed then it may have the effect in the current year or it may have the effect in the future years also. Then AS5 says whatever is the effect during the current year should be disclosed and in future years also the financial statement should disclose that we have changed the accounting estimate due to which this is the effect on the profit or loss. So everything should be disclosed not only during the current year but also in the future years. As per AS5, if the change in accounting estimate has no material effect, then it need not be disclosed. One more point AS5 has given that if you find that by changing the accounting estimate, it will not have material effect on the profit or loss, then it is not required to be disclosed. Huh? If the effect is significant, then only the effect should be shown, disclosed in the financial statements. That's all. So I have explained about change in accounting estimates. The last and final is change in accounting policy. Accounting policy is the basic principles which are applied in accounting in preparing the financial statements. So change in accounting policy, once an accounting policy is adopted, it should not be changed every year according to consistency concept. Accounting consistency concept says once an accounting policy is adopted, the same policy should be continued every year in future. It should not be changed every year. But sometimes certain situation arises where it is necessary to change the accounting policy. So when the accounting policy can be changed here, a change in accounting policy should be made only if it is required by statute. Statute means law. If the law, I mean, applies, if the law says to change the accounting policy, then compulsory because we are bound by law. Whatever law says, we have to follow. So particular accounting policy we are following for a number of years. Current year, the law has changed and the law is asking us to change the accounting policy. So we have to change it. So this is the first circumstances where we have to change the accounting policy if it is asked by the statute. Secondly, or for compliance of an accounting standard. Suppose a new accounting standard has been released, has become effective. Due to the implementation of accounting standard, we have to change the accounting policy. So accounting policy may be changed due to the change in law or accounting policy may be changed due to the compliance of a new accounting standard. Thirdly, or if it results in more appropriate presentation of financial statements. If the management thinks that 
if we change the accounting policy we can be able to present a better financial statements true and fair financial statements then the business can change the accounting policy so remember accounting palace policy normally every year will not be changed only under three circumstances the accounting policy can be changed first first of all if it is required by law statute secondly in compliance with an accounting standard or if the management thinks that we have to change the accounting policy to make better financial statements any change in accounting policy that has a material effect should be disclosed along with the impact of the change where the change is not ascertainable the same should be indicated whatever is the effect of this change in accounting policy on the profit for the current year and also for the future year that should be disclosed for example during the current year accounting policy is changed due to the change in accounting policy the our profit is affected 10000 rupees profit is low current year because of change in accounting policy that should be disclosed example i am saying that means monetarily 10000 is the effect on profit due to the change in accounting policy that should be disclosed in the financial statements ha huh? if the impact if the effect is insignificant immaterial small or the amount of effect cannot be determined ascertained in that case the fact should be given in the financial statement the management must state in the financial statement that the accounting policy has been changed but the effect on this is very minute insignificant or the amount of effect cannot be ascertained correctly that fact should be shown in the financial statement that's all all the five points i have explained now lastly points to be noted first revision of wages with retrospective effect is not a prior period item it should be included in the current year's wages but shown separately suppose revision of wages wages of workers during the current year the work, uh, the wages of the workers have been changed have been increased with retrospective effect retrospective effect means since last 4 5 years example 4 years back the workers has put the uh, i mean application to the management we want increase in wages increase in wages since last 4 years the case is going on the management has not increased but during the current year the management has accepted okay we will increase the wages with retrospective effect last 4 years wages we will pay right now current year this is not a prior period item it is a current year item only but separately it should be disclosed in the statement of profit and loss in the statement of profit and loss separately how much is the current year wages and how much is the wages of retrospective effect that should be shown next one is a uh, change in net realizable value of damaged stock in closing stock is a change in accounting estimate if damaged stock is there the net realizable value of the damaged stock is the change in the accounting estimate that should be disclosed third one to be called a prior period item such an item should arose in the current year due to errors or omissions error occurred in the past due to some errors or omissions occurred in the previous years and the effect of that errors and omissions are occurring in the current year this is called a prior period item next one is when an enterprise changes an accounting policy to comply with the accounting standard the impact of the same must be suitably disclosed just now we have discussed if there is a change in the accounting policy what is the impact of the change on the profit or loss that should be disclosed lastly a change in the provision for doubtful debts is a change in accounting estimate not a prior period item so a change in the provision for doubtful debts last year provision for doubtful debts were 5% current year the provision for doubtful debts has been changed to 10% it is called change in accounting estimate it is not a prior period item that's all so these are the points you have to remember i have explained each and every point to the best of my ability if you have not understood in the first attempt watch the video twice and thrice definitely you can be able to get the good command
watch all the videos be perfect on the subject of accounting standard i wish you all the best for your preparations and for your exams inshallah we will continue the next accounting standard in the next video